Hey guys, so I would like to share my testimony about how God saved me from witchcraft and New Age and how I first got involved and what influenced me growing up to get involved in these practices. As a kid, I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I went to Catholic school and Mass every Wednesday, but we never heard the gospel or plan of salvation. In school, we had a religion class that had very little do to do with Jesus. Instead, it was mostly about who all these saints were and why they were saints and which angel does what and which angel or saint to pray to for this specific reason. Uh, for example, we would pray to Raphael for healing or Michael for protection or Saint Anthony to help us find our lost things or Mary to pray for our salvation. So when we heard about Jesus in school, it was only about how his mother conceived immaculate, immaculately, um, how she was a virgin when she got pregnant with Jesus, um, how Jesus was born in a manger and he died on a cross for our sins so we can get to heaven under circum uh, certain circumstances. In Mass, we had certain times of the year when we celebrated certain rituals or ceremonies like Stations of the Cross but we also rarely heard about Jesus unless it was Good Friday, Easter, Christmas, Palm Sunday, and Lent. And it was never the gospel of salvation. To tell the truth, we were never really told to read the Bible and the sermons that were given during Mass were also very limited. I never heard anything in the New Testament in the six years that I went to the Catholic school and Mass and as far as the Old Testament goes, we heard about Noah and Adam and Eve, and that was pretty much it. So I remember as a kid, I got bullied a lot for my entire childhood, but I still loved God. But as I got older, I started crying more, and I was never happy. The bullying was so intense that I became cold, and my heart was really hard because I wanted to be numb inside from all the physical and verbal abuse coming from the other kids and the teachers. And there was something really wrong with the teachers at that school. For some reason, they would pick on certain kids and punish them for no reason and accuse us of doing something that we never even did. It wasn't just me, it was other kids that they did that to. And I've heard similar stories at other Catholic schools. So sadly, I know that my case and my school wasn't just the only one. But my mom pulled me out when she saw the bruises on my neck from when the kids tied a jump rope around me and told me I should kill myself and the world would be better off if I was dead. This came from another 10 year old kid that I knew and used to bully me all, bully me all the time. Um, now that I'm older, I know that he had some serious issues and it wasn't really him that was speaking to me. It was some demonic influence. But I suffered from intense bullying as a child and I felt so powerless. So my mom took me out of the school when I was 10 or 11 and I was homeschooled until I graduated high school. But when I was 14, my mom had a stroke and was paralyzed and I was so scared because I didn't know how to take care of her. We prayed the rosary and Lord's Prayer over and over again, and I was so scared that I was going to lose my mom or she would never recover. So I prayed and prayed, and after about a month, she recovered. She could walk again, but three months after her recovery, she had another stroke and was paralyzed again. This time, no matter how long I prayed, even for years, she didn't recover. Sometimes she would regain some movement where it was lost before, but overall, her health declined more and more. So at 15 years old, I was taking care of my mother. My dad was working, and I was going to school and being a full-time caregiver at the same time. We had no idea how to go about it, and it was a very mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausting and difficult time on all of us. And it was very hard for me, especially as a teenager. Um, I know my mom used to be very independent and she was used to taking care of everything and suddenly she couldn't even feed herself. And because that affected her so strongly, 
it was very emotionally difficult for her. And because of that uh, that time and how it affected her, sometimes we would get in really big fights and she would tell me that I was useless because I wasn't strong enough to pick her up to help her go to the bathroom or help her uh, move to her wheelchair or anything like that. And when she said that to me, I just got so frustrated and hurt that I just went outside to the car and I just started praying. I was asking God, where are you? Why are you not doing anything? Am I not good enough? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you healing my mom? I keep asking and praying, where are you? And I just got so angry and frustrated that I took a knife and just started cutting myself and crying because I felt so much hatred towards myself and I just didn't really know how to handle that. I felt like God completely abandoned me because I didn't understand that he wills things to be a certain way, but it's for our good. In hindsight, hindsight, now that I'm more emotionally and uh, spiritually mature, I know 100% that the entire situation was for our good. It taught my mom a lot of patience. It taught me and my dad a lot of patience. Um, And it taught us all a lot of endurance. And in the end, we grow a lot stronger as a family. So I'm grateful for that. But it was incredibly difficult to go through that, especially as a teenager, from my perspective. Um, Most nights I only got about four hours of sleep and it was all interrupted. So every 15 minutes I was waking up to help my mom with something. And I was always dizzy and stressed out. Mentally, emotionally, and physically, I was just completely done. I felt like I had nothing left. And I also felt like I had to grin and bear it for the sake of my family. And I couldn't, I couldn't let it out in any way or talk to any about it, anybody about it because there was nobody for me to talk to and I was always taught, don't be a burden on somebody else. So, um, uh, because ev- I kept everything bottled up, I would have random emotional breakdowns and outbursts and I would just start crying over something that didn't usually affect me emotionally. Or I would get really upset and triggered over something that was so minor. I gave up hope and that was my biggest mistake. And I want to tell people, I this is the most important thing I can tell you. My biggest mistake and my biggest regret was giving up on God because I felt like he didn't care or he just hated me. At that point in my life as a a teenager, I felt some animosity towards God because I didn't, uh, I knew that I had to keep being quote unquote a good Catholic and not give up my faith in God because I was told that I would go to hell. So I felt even more powerless and like no one would or could help me. When I was 17, I got involved in New Age practices. It started out um, with me watching videos on YouTube of tarot card readers and the monthly zodiac signs, um, readings, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, I I didn't really know what they were, but I found out that it was a form of fortune telling and I had some mixed feelings about it at first. Um, My mom was gifted with some sort of psychic ability, Uh, at least that's what we used to call it. She could read minds, uh, she could see the future sometimes, she could see spirits and her intuition told her a lot of things. So she knew about a lot of things that were happening that nobody told her about. She could even see things happening 
is someplace else. Like for one instance, uh, she saw my cousin messing around with a Ouija board and nobody even told my mom that was going on. Uh, so um, in, in our family, we also had a relative on my mother's side. I think it was my mother's grandmother. Yeah, she uh, had a crystal ball and practiced divination, but my mom was somewhat against that. Uh, she was definitely against tarot cards. So I kind of knew that they were a cult, but I also thought that my mom was just really religious and superstitious, and the card readers and the practice was completely misunderstood. You know, as a teenager, I thought that I knew better as a, uh, better than everybody else. And yeah, that was a really big mistake on my part. I really should have listened to my mom. Um, eventually, I found some Christian tarot card readers talking about how it was a gift from God. And then I learned about twin flames and one reader was talking about how some guy named Tobit in the, in the Bible was the twin flame of some other guy's daughter who had seven husbands that were all killed by a demon. And so I, you know, because I was told that twin flames are in the Bible, I easily got suckered into this practice. I also easily got suckered in because it gave me a sense of comfort and power knowing that I, I might understand or know what was going to happen in my future. Um, or yeah, number two, it was a distraction from what I was going through. Number three, I didn't know my Bible and the Catholic Bible is full of heresies. Uh, number four, I was already accustomed to praying to angels and saints growing up as a Catholic. So contacting what I thought were my guardian angels didn't raise any alarm bells to me. I learned about angel oracle cards and all that stuff. And they were designed by a person called Doreen Virtue. And I'll get back to her more later because she played an important part in me getting saved. So after that... I bought a deck of anime style tarot cards and started practicing with those. At that time, some paranormal activity started happening inside my house. My mom started seeing these really creepy spirits and having nightmares, and I didn't put two and two together. So then I started getting involved in crystals and Reiki. I found a master Reiki practitioner's channel and I was in such dark place and filled with a lot of hatred and resentment towards a lot of people and I was dealing with a lot of rejection and anger and I was hurting so much th that I was just bawling one night and that's when I found videos about Reiki and energy work. So I would binge watch these videos because they brought me to a place where I felt so much peace and comfort. But little did I know that it was actually a false peace. I wasn't really dealing with a problem. Instead, I was putting a band-aid over a really deep gash. Once I started experiencing it, I wanted to help other people the way I thought these Reiki practitioners were helping me. So I started getting involved in crystal magic and healing and energy work and chakra opening meditations and high frequency binaural beats, that kind of stuff. I also started getting involved in white magic and manifestation rituals because I thought that I was doing the will of God. I thought that I was being a good person by helping others by doing magic for them and helping them in their finances and attract love and good fortune and all that kind of stuff. One thing led to another and before I knew it I was practicing Wicca and poking my finger to offer my blood as a sacrifice to God who was also supposed to be another way that we called the universe or whatever. 
After that, my mom died, and in my grief, I was trying to communicate with her. My grandmother was from Japan, and she was practicing a mixture of Buddhism and Catholicism, and I thought that making offerings to your deceased loved ones and talking to them was normal. So I tried to contact my mom and make offerings and that sort of thing. As I was dealing with my loss, I dealt with a lot of backstabbing and betrayal at that very same time. I had a boyfriend who wanted me to move in with him and I told him that I just got the news that my mom was terminally ill and she was going on hospice and I told him that I was her only caregiver and I needed to stay with her. So he just broke up with me the same day I found out that my mom only had about a month to live. As I was dealing with all of that, I was doing more Reiki to help cleanse my energy and cut cords and about six months after my mom died, I started feeling a very strong pull from God and I started stumbling across a few videos from multiple ex-witches and warlocks and new agers explaining that witchcraft and new age is dangerous and it's a deception. One of the first videos I found was from Doreen Virtue, the same lady who made the angel cards. I found out that she had a YouTube channel and I saw that she was making videos revealing and exposing New Age philosophy. She was really highly respected in the New Age community because almost every reader had her cards and she was a clairvoyant, she had uh, she, all these conventions and she was very popular. After I watched some of her videos on her YouTube channel and found out about what she said about New Age and the fact that she became a Christian, I was totally shocked because I thought that I was a practicing Christian. But when she said that it's not about a religion and it's about having a relationship with Jesus, I knew that everything that I knew was a lie. I felt like her story growing up in Christian science was just like mine growing up as a Catholic. We both thought that we were practicing Christians and doing the will of God, but we weren't. Her testimony totally blew my mind, and then I stumbled, stumbled across uh, John Ramirez, who used to be a very high-ranking satanic priest. In one sermon that he was giving at a church, he was talking about New Age and tarot cards. That was how I found out that I wasn't talking to my guardian angels, but to demons. I found out that the manifestation and white witchcraft that I was doing was just as evil and dark as black magic. Magic is magic, period. Then I heard his testimony about how Jesus brought him to hell and he said, I don't belong here. And he was running from the devil when the devil tried to kill him. And the cross showed up in front of him and protected him. I was so in shock and remorseful about what I was doing. I paused the video and just cried until I fell asleep. When I did fall asleep, I had a nightmare that I was in the same room in my bed, sleeping, except there was an ugly version of Beyonce in her single ladies video, and this ugly version of her started wrestling with me on the bed. I have a background in self-defense and fighting, so I fought with lots of people, including very large and strong men. I've trained for more than 10 years. And this thing was stronger than a man. It looked like an emaciated, mean version of the singer, but it was so strong. And this dream felt like it was real life because I felt fully conscious in this dream. Eventually, I was able to fight my way to get on top of this thing. But it was choking me with its hands around my neck and it wouldn't let me go. So I... I had put it in a headlock at the same time and we were both choking each other out and I knew that it was close to passing out but so was I. Uh, I saw my vision go dark and the both of us passed out in the dream. Then, And that was when I woke up. I was really disturbed by the dream and as I was starting to calm down and process what was just going on. The ceiling light and the closet next to the bed just crashed and hit the floor. And I was so scared that I ran downstairs and I couldn't sleep. I was asking God why that was happening to me. 
I kept crying and I tried to calm myself down, so I just kept watching the same video that I was before. This was when John started talking about when he gave his life to Christ. The devil was so mad that he sent Jezebel and other demons after him and tormented him for 30 days. And he asked God why this was happening to him. And God said it was because he wanted to see how much John loved him and how much he trusted him. And that was when I put two and two together and I realized why I just got attacked. When John was talking about God and how much he loves us, I felt the love of God and peace for the first time in I don't know how long. I don't even know if I felt peace before then. When I realized who God was and that he wasn't just a terrible person or someone who didn't or couldn't care about me, I told God that I was so sorry for everything that I'd done. I told him that I loved him and I wanted to give my life to Jesus. At that time, a video by Derek Prince popped up on my screen and um, he was talking about the occult and how to get saved. I clicked on it and watched it and I renounced all practices of divination, witchcraft, reiki, and everything that I got myself into. Um, in the video he said that if you renounced it, you need to take your crystals, your sage, your spell books, chakra books, tarot cards, any and all tools of divination and witchcraft and burn it or throw it out. So that's what I did and I said that's not me anymore. I'm dead in Christ now and I'm somebody new. And to this day when I think about the price that Christ paid for me on that cross and that he died for someone like me to have another chance and how much he loved me to do that, it still makes me cry sometimes because I'm astounded at his mercy and his love. He even came for somebody like me who hated it, who pretty, I'll be honest, I hated God at that time because I felt so abandoned and I felt like, eh, Jesus not gonna do anything, Jesus doesn't, Jesus doesn't love me. But that changed when I realized how much he really did love me. And I felt so sad and so stupid that, and mad at myself that I, did, I didn't give him a chance before. And I didn't realize who he was. I misjudged him. Um, but now, I really hate witchcraft and New Age because of how easy it is for people to get deceived especially young people. New Age is trendy now, and that's what's very disturbing and scary to me. Horoscopes, zodiac signs, crystals, tarot cards. Everywhere I go, soap and candle shops sell tarot and crystal candles. Five Below sell sage and crystal chakra books. At farmer's markets and shops inside inside the malls. I see tarot reader, readers and energy workers and people selling crystals for love and abundance and uh, evil eye charms. There are so many videos on YouTube of people trying to do energy work and a lot of people don't know what they're getting into or what they're getting others into. A lot of them are too proud to accept that Jesus is the only way the only truth and the only life and there is no such thing as your truth or my truth but the truth your opinion and perspective exist yeah and my perspective exists but it doesn't mean that it's the truth and then there are people who have been delivered the memo but don't want to give up their practices because they know that they make a lot of money doing reiki or tarot readings or um selling crystal pendants and smudge or bracelets that they've charged with energy. I try to witness to people, especially young kids who have the crystals around their necks, and I tell them the good, the bad, and the ugly of my journey, and how and why I got involved with New Age, and why Jesus is the only way, and why he's the only right way. 
Doreen Virtue really hit the nail on the head when she said that trauma survivors are extremely easy prey for New Age philosophy because it gives them a false sense of security. And that was exactly why I fell for the deception and that's why young people, especially teenagers, fall for it easily. Teenage years are typically a very difficult stage of life. I, I mean, mine really were. I heard a lot of teenagers... Uh, I heard of a lot of teenagers um, that are trying to fit in and who have dealt with a lot of rejection and pain. And that's why they are targeted the most. Not young men and women, but teenagers. But at this point in time, there are also a lot of young men and women who haven't dealt from that trauma that they experienced as teenagers. So they're getting suckered into this deception quite easily as well. So a lot of the Zodiac sign apparel and jewelry that I've seen is actually sold at stores that are marketed towards teenage girls. I've seen a lot of them at Francesca's and Forever 21 and Aeropostale. And I hate seeing young people who might be on the path to repeating my mistakes. And I want to save them from that pain and that deception, that place of not having a relationship with God and that regret that I still have to this day. I know God has forgiven me, but I still wish that I never even strayed from him in the first place. As soon as I realized what I got myself into, I realized what a huge mistake I made because I realized what I was missing out on. As soon as I gave my life to Jesus and renounced all that witchcraft, I started coughing so hard I couldn't even breathe. But when I took my first breath after that coughing fit, it was like my lung capacity doubled what it was before I even started coughing. And now that I've seen deliverances taking place, I know that I was experiencing the manifestation of those demons leaving my body. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ delivered me from the spirit of rejection, the spirit of hatred, and all these spirits of witchcraft in my life in my living room and for the first time I felt healed I felt peace and the first thing that came to my mind when I took my first breath is oh my gosh I feel like I'm alive <laughs> because th then I realized how dead I was I, I mean I was spiritually dead and I felt stagnation that's what spiritual death feels like it feels like stagnation and like you're numb and you can't feel anything if you're getting out of New Age or you have a friend or you know a young teenager or somebody who's involved in it, please pray that you or they know who God is and how good he is and get them to read the Bible. I had no foundation because I never read the Bible or listened to an audiobook version of it. If I did, this whole mess would have been avoided completely because I would have been armed with the armor of God. I would have known his word and been standing on a strong foundation. And I wouldn't have been shaken in the midst of all that adversary or, or, or all that hardship. And I can't tell you how many witches and warlocks and new agers who have come to Jesus and they all said the same thing. I wish I had read the Bible and given God a chance sooner. You don't know if today might be your last day. You don't know if God will say your time is up within the next week or day or hour. I'll leave you with this. He is gracious and he will sound the warning bell and let you know where you're stepping in error. But sooner or later... His grace and his mercy will run out. By then it will be too late. God loves you. Jesus loves you and it breaks his heart every day that he sees you running away from him. He wants nothing more than to have a relationship with you and to know you as his son or daughter. God bless you and I pray that one day I get to see you and shake your hand on Hallelujah Boulevard in heaven. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.